Okay, friends, again, welcome to Prophetic Insights here at Save to Serve and Prophesy Again Ministries. Current events are transpiring all around us. Only those who have eyes anointed by the Spirit of God, only those who understand the prophecies from Scripture are able to discern the signs of the times, and it's time for all of us to be prepared for the closing scenes of this earth's history. Before we get into it, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer at this time. Father in heaven, bless us now, we pray. Give us wisdom, knowledge, understanding is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, friends, we're told in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 1 and verse number 9, the things that have been, those things shall be. And the things which are now transpiring, those things shall be. And there's no new thing under the sun. And this is why all of us must be spending time in searching God's word. There's no time to be partaking of the milk. We need strong meat in these last days. So we can discern the signs of the times. And God's word says, those who will not read the lessons from God's book, God's Bible, they are bidden to read it in the history of nations. Well, more specifically, we're going to be focusing on the history of the nation of France uh, during the time period of the late 1780s and also the 1790s, wherein the reign of terror and also the French Revolution were transpiring. And during that time, France was entrenched mm. in bloodshed and debauchery, all kind of crimes of the basest sort. Uh, can't even be named. They were so uh, cruel and unscrupulous. Uh, there was moral declension. There was financial collapse. The whole nation basically was brought to its knees. It was destroyed. And we need to ask ourselves a question, what caused this state of, of corruption? What caused the, the d utter degradation and deplorable condition of France? And we're told that it was the policies of Rome that had wrought those conditions. Now, notice what this says in the book, Great Controversy, page 276. Hillary? It was popery that had begun the work which atheism was completing. The policy of Rome had wrought out those conditions, social, political, and religious, that were hurrying France on to ruin. During that time period in the history of France, we saw the rise of monopolies, and they were controlling everything. Mm. We also saw the antithesis to that, which was the anti-monopoly movement. And the strife between these two movements brought about such a condition. And we know that Rome was playing on both sides. Exactly. The size of the monopolies on one hand, and on the other hand, the mobilization of the poorer classes, the uh, masses, mm. to oppose the monopolies. Even the unions. Correct. Even the unions. And friends, something happened this week, just a few days ago that triggered this prophetic insights. Take a look at this, because this news article is going to confirm that indeed a repetition of the crises that transpired in France during the French Revolution, the reign of terror is going to be repeated in these last days, even so beginning in the United States of America. Look at this right here. This is uh, Common Dreams, September 1st, 2017. Look at the headline from this article. As tech giants threaten democracy, calls for grow for new anti-monopoly movement. Notice what the call is. It is time for citizens in America and all over the world to stand up to the bullies in our society, the monopolists. So what are they calling for? a new anti-monopoly movement. And who are they calling bullies? The monopolists. The monopolists. And what we're seeing here, September 1st, 2017, it's a fulfillment of what God said to us all the way back in the 1800s. Look at the statement here. 
from the book Education, page 228. It says this, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away all law, not only divine, but human. The centralizing of wealth and power, the vast combinations for the enriching of the few at the expense of the many. That one group, these are the monopolies. Look at the reaction now. The anti-monopoly movements, even the unions. The next phrase says, the combinations of the poorer classes. For what, Hillary? For the defense of their interests and claims. The spirit of unrest, of riot and bloodshed. The worldwide dissemination of the same teachings that led to the French Revolution all are tending to involve the whole world in a struggle similar to that which convulsed France. So do you realize that there are two groups here? This is the monopoly, the, the, the rich, garnering all the wealth from various businesses. And what is the reaction? Now we have the union, the poor classes, Correct. coming together to, to fight against the monopolies. And both groups led to what in France? Go back to that screen. The very first sentence says, at the same time, anarchy is seeking to sweep away what, Hillary? All law, not only divine, but human. And notice now, again, those who will not read the lesson from God's book are bidden to read it in the history of nations. So what happened in France will happen again in America. All laws will be discarded. Hmm. Not only human, but what? But divine, divine law. Is a Sunday law coming? Oh, yes. Is the mark of the beast near? Let's get back to that article that triggered this lesson that we are looking at. Look at this right here. This paragraph is very startling. Read that for us. A stark indication of this influence was on display Wednesday when Barry Lynn, a prominent critic of corporate power, was ousted from the influential think tank New America for praising the European Union's decision to fine Google for abusing its market dominance. Hmm. As a consequence of this experience, Lynn spearheaded the creation of Citizens, Citizens Against, Against Monopoly, Monopoly. All right. a project devoted to documenting and warning against the dangers of concentrated private power. So just for emphasis, what is this new movement called? Citizens Against Monopoly. Don't forget that. Read on. Mm -hmm. Since the early days of the Reagan administration, power over almost all forms of economic activity in America has been steadily concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. And we're going to come back to that. Lynn notes in an op-ed for the Washington Post, this includes retail and transportation. It includes pharmaceuticals and farming. It includes almost every, every corner, corner of, of the, the internet. internet. This consolidation of private power is not only a threat to our economic well-being, Lynn observes, it is also a dire threat to democracy itself. So notice now, let's digest that. So what Lynn, Barry Lynn is saying that the monopolies that are being formed, they would destroy not only our economic well-being, but this democracy itself. And what we're going to see is the anti-monopoly movement will also lead to the demise of America, the demise and the repudiation of our liberties in America and then around the world. That's right. Both movements will bring about the repudiation of our liberties. Let's read on. Last sentence. Wherever you work, Whatever you do, your livelihood and your liberties mm. are every day more at risk as long as we allow a few giant corporations, especially in online commerce, to continue to extend their reach into and over the world of ideas. I hope these points are clear so far. Now let's go back to that very sentence. Those words that are colored in red, it says this. And the reason why I want to emphasize this it's because, again, the Lord's messenger told us that this would be the case in the last days. It says, since the early days of the Reagan administration, power over almost all forms 
of economic activity in America, listen carefully now, has been steadily concentrated in fewer and fewer hands. Hmm. Look at this prophecy that we're now seeing being fulfilled. It says this in Manuscript Releases, Volume 4, page 75. Hillary. In the world, gigantic monopolies will be formed. Mm. Men will bind themselves together in unions that will wrap them in the folds of the enemy. A few men will combine to grasp all the means to be obtained in certain lines of businesses. There it is. Now, here's the reaction. Mm. Trades unions will be formed, and those who refuse to join these unions will be marked wow. men. You know, when we started, you brought out a statement that said that those who will not learn the lessons of history uh, will read the lessons in the history of nations. Yes. So do we see this happening? Those who refuse to join with these unions as marked men. Mm. We see that in the history of the Bolshevik Revolution. In Russia. Yes. Notice here, friends. Notice. Notice. This is uh, from the Smithsonian. February 17th, 2017. Headline says, Russia's. February revolution was led by women on the march. Hmm. Read that for us. And it's interesting that as we read this statement that they're going to even liken what happened in Russia with the French revolution hmm. Hmm. as a repetition. Connecting of sorts. the dots. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. In the country's urban centers with men on the battlefield, women took on new roles in the workforce hmm. as they did throughout Europe during the war. Between 1914 and 1917, 250,000 more women began working outside the home for the first time. Mm. By the outbreak of the February Revolution, mm. close to one million female workers lived in Russia's cities, but were paid half the wages of men and endured substandard living conditions. Like the French Revolution in 1789, a bread shortage in the capital precipitated unrest. Let's move on. Let's move on. Okay. Let's move on. Next paragraph. The next day, March 8th, was the annual celebration of International Women's Day. Since 1913, Russian revolutionary factions, including the Bolsheviks, had encouraged women to celebrate the occasion as an opportunity to build solidarity. At the textile factories, women went on strike and marched to the metal works mm. to persuade the men employed there to join them. An employee of the Nobel Engineering Works recalled. So those who didn't join at first were what now? They were marked. marked men, and they were forced to join the, the poorer classes who were going against the oligarchs, the leaders in Russia, mm -hmm. and those who refused at first to join the unions to fight against the monopolies, the leaders, the hierarchies, they were threatened. That's right. Coerced. Even with their lives. Mm -hmm. Read that for us. We could hear women's voices in the lane, overlooked by the windows of our department. Down with high prices, down with hunger, bread for the workers. Mm. I and several comrades rushed to the windows. Masses of women workers in a militant frame of mind filled the lane. Mm -hmm. Those who caught sight of us began to wave their arms shouting, come out, stop work. Mm. Snowballs flew through the windows. We decided to join the demonstration. And it's interesting that uh, yes. women were used here because we know that in the last days, women are going to not only literal women, but also spiritual women or churches. churches. They will play a prominent role in bringing about Satan's agenda mm. for a one world government, which is nothing more than a monopoly. So when we say that uh, popery is behind uh, the monopolies on one hand, and also the anti-monopoly movements, he's stirring them up to, to oppose, to bring about this uh, unrest so that he can come in as the solution. But women will play a prominent role. Now, again, what we're seeing here is that the powers that be, even the Jesuits from Rome, played on both, both ends of the spectrum. Let's go back here. Take a look at this, friends. This is Matt Stoller. And again, the, the text that came to my mind was James chapter 5. Because the Bible tells us in the last days, just before the second coming of Jesus, that the rich are going to gather up all the wealth of society. And when we see this, the, the rise of monopolies, we know that we're living in the last days. By the way, what happened between Amazon and uh, 
Whole Foods was one more step of forming a gigantic monopoly. Mm -hmm. We are here as Google is buying up these other businesses and corporations. These are gigantic monopolies, monopolies. being formed. And very, very soon there is going to be a reaction. The unions, the groups would show us then there's going to be civil unrest, riots, bloodshed, and our laws are going to be repudiated. Not only human laws, but divine, divine laws. laws. Get back here, my friends. Go back and read James chapter 5, verse 1 through verse 11. It says, Hillary, Matt Stoller. Matt Stoller, formerly a fellow at New America who has joined Lynn at mm -hmm. Citizens Against Monopoly, right. argued in a piece for BuzzFeed that corporate consolidation allows a small group of people to exercise control over a much larger group, mm. which results in both extremes of wealth inequality and extremes of political corruption. It is time for citizens in America and, and all, all over, over the, the world... world to stand up to the bullies in our society. It is time to look to the real governors and regulators in America and around the world. Who are they? The monopolists, right. Stoller concluded. It's been more than 70 years since we've seen a broad-based citizens movement against the power of monopoly. Listen to this. It's long past time for one. Wow. Do you see where we are, my friend? We are on the precipice of a repetition of the French Revolution. That's right. Read on. Following Lynn's firing. Following Lynn's firing, several prominent progressive lawmakers expressed support for the Citizens Against Monopoly effort, including Senator Elizabeth Warren mm. and Republican John Conyers. On Twitter, Conyers declared, Americans are fed up with monopolies, mm, mm, rigging mm. our economy and politics, mm. Lynn concluded. Mm, mm, mm. And it's interesting that we are seeing even now that monopolies and the favorability toward monopolies are, are decreasing. But the favorability for unions, mm -hmm. trade unions, labor unions, it's increasing. Which show us then the reaction to the monopolies is already here. Right. And it's only going to get worse. Why? Because the powers that be that destroyed France in the French Revolution by playing on both sides of the spectrum, we call it the Hegelian dialectic. You create the problem and then you bring forward the, the supposed solution. Mm -hmm. And you win. That's right. You control that country. The same thing is happening right now. But this movement is fast gaining ground because just a few years, a few months back, we heard about the 1% movement and how all kind of people were... Uh, we, we are the 99% Yeah, the, the 1%. I'm sorry, the 99% yes. that were opposing the 1% of Correct. those wealthy men that owned and controlled, monopolized everything. And so they were uh, demonstrating, they went on hunger strikes, yes. there was all kind of... Uh, demonstrations throughout the country All that went on. the major cities and around the world. That's the Occupy movement. Yes, yes, exactly. And so we're seeing that the stage is being set for this uh, condition of France to be repeated. Look at this, my friends. Look at this. This is the Gallup poll. August 30th, 2017. A few days ago, the headline reads, Labor Union approval is what? The best since... 2003. Where is it now? At 61%. Wow. The anti-monopoly movement is here just as we're told in education, page 228, just as we're told in the book Great Controversy. The end is right upon us. The confederacies are now being formed. I want to read you something here from the book Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 8 and verse number 9 talking about the confederacies, the unions that will be formed in these last days. And the Bible says, once these unions are being formed, and once we are being persuaded to join these movements, it's time for God's people now to bind up the testimony and to seal the law among themselves and among God's disciples. It's time for God's people to be sealed Amen. as we see these things. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 9, it says this, Associate yourselves. Skip on down to verse 12. Say you not a confederacy to all them to whom 
this people shall say, a confederacy, neither fear you their fear, Amen. nor be afraid, but sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear. Amen. Let him be your dread. What message tells us to fear God, especially in the last days? The first angel's message. So while Amen. we're seeing these confederacies being formed, both on the side of monopolies, mm -hmm. okay? For example, the most recent, uh, Amazon buying Whole Foods, and there are many others. Right. That's one side, the monopolies. Mm -hmm. And also the unions on the other side. Most recently, citizens against monopolies. monopolies. We know that we are here. It's time now to receive the three angels' messages. As we, as we bring this to a close, verse number 16, and now bind up the testimony and seal the law among my disciples. Look at this right here. This is from Manuscript Releases, volume 4, page 75. Unionism has revealed what it is by the spirit that it has manifested. Pause right there. Because some folks may say, but aren't these unions good, uh, a good thing? Because they are standing for the oppressed. They are standing for the marginalized. Mm -hmm. For social justice. They, they are championing social justice. And economic justice. My friends. Mm -hmm. Even that which is good can be hijacked by the prince of darkness and his human agents, the papacy. Read that for us from and top. She talks about uh, the spirit that is manifested. When you get into these mob mentality and get in with these unions, it brings about a satanic uh, spirit, as we will see. It is controlled by the from cruel... Top. Okay, unionism has revealed what it is by the spirit that it has manifested. It is controlled by the cruel power of Satan. Those who refuse to join the unions formed are made to feel this power. Mm. The principles governing the forming of these unions seem innocent, mm. but men have to pledge themselves to serve the interests of these unions, or else. or else they may have to pay the penalty of refusal with their lives. Do we see what's coming? Yes. Read on. These unions are one of the signs of the last days. So are we here? Yes. Read on. Men are binding up in bundles ready to be burned. They may be church members, but while they belong to these unions, they, they cannot, cannot possibly keep the commandments of God. For to belong to these unions means to disregard the entire Decalogue. It is time for us to take our work out of the cities. And if you go back to the French Revolution and the Bolshevik Revolution in Russia, those who were in the cities suffered greater than those who resided in the rural districts. Mm -hmm. Can we not see the work of preparation, both in the mind, in spirit, and practically? Again, Christians cannot be a part of these unions. Amen. The anti-monopoly movement, as well as fighting for social justice and forming confederacies. Christians should not be a part of these things. Amen. The whole world, it says, back to the screen, manuscript, releases book four, page 75, paragraph two. The whole world is to be tested, and what, Hillary? And obedience to the law of God is, is to, to be, be the, the test. test. So what is, what is all these things leading us to? To them enforcing the commandments of men That's in it. opposition to the commandments That's of God. It. The final test. It says, finish up. Well, this is from volume 9, page 11. The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Mm. Great changes are soon to take place in our world and the final movement will be rapid ones. You know, let's go back there. It says the agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. What does that say based on our study? Which groups are being binding into groups? Well, on one hand, you have the monopolies that That's are consolidating everything. It. But then you have other uh, unions being formed as well to combat the monopoly. So you see both groups in that one sentence. That's it. And they are strengthening for what? The, for the last, last great, great crisis. crisis. 
Then we are told what now great changes are soon to take place where? In our world. And, and the final movements will be rapid ones. All right, friends. What more can be said? And while the last movements of Earth's history are going to be rapid, we have to make sure that we are moving quickly to get our homes in order, our family members ready for the mark of the beast crisis, getting ready for death because death can come at any time, getting ready for the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's why we are told time is almost finished. And the great question is, do you reflect the lovely image of Jesus as you should? Get ready, get, get ready. ready, get, get ready. ready. You will have to die a deeper death to the world than you have ever yet died. Mm. Father in heaven, again we thank you for this presentation. Let it be as a nail in a sure place. Open our eyes and keep us watchful, keep us prayerful, keep us working aggressively for the salvation of those around us. Save us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, friends, until we meet again, Maranatha.